Valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's video is the Santa Fe Class 3000, the Double Decapod, Gone Wrong. Enjoy. Our story begins in 1911, and that's when the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway Company constructed 10 2 10 10 2 compound Malays, which at the time were the world's largest locomotives. They were numbered 3000 to 3009. These giants were the first engine to exceed a half a million pounds in weight for just a locomotive. These huge locomotives are actually cobbled together from the earlier 210 two wheel arrangements of the 900 or 1600 class Santa Fe's, of which I couldn't determine which class it exactly was, so I'll just mention both of them. And also the Santa Fe 3000s were the pioneering 210 two double decapod type locomotives. And only one other railroad actually built them, and that was the Virginian, which we've already covered in the past. But unlike the Virginian models, the Santa Fe design was wrought with problems, and we're going to go over those. And one of the most notable features to this design was their 111,600 pound tractive effort, which was almost unbelievable back then. And it was used primarily for helper service out of Barstow, California, on Cahoon Pass, or out of Bakerfield. Although the Santa Fe 3000 class appeared to have exceedingly long boilers, the barrel in front of the rear set of cylinders actually contained first a primitive superheater for further heating of the steam before use. In this design, the steam was carried forward from the boiler proper by outside steam pipes, of which you can clearly see in any photograph of this class. Secondly, also contained in this space was a reheater to give additional energy to the high pressure exhaust before it was fed to the forward low pressure cylinders. And in front of that, there was a feed water heater, a space where cold water from the tender could be warmed before being injected into the water proper. This works similarly to the boiler itself. The fire tubes pass through the feed water tank. So from one point of view, you could say that the Santa Fe Class 3000 double decapods were the first true superpower articulated locomotives. So the question bears asking, in this time frame, which is the 1910s, would the Santa Fe Railroad basically kit bash together a pair of 210 2 locomotives and create this 3000 series double decapod? And well, the issue was forced upon the United States and Canadian railways. The necessity to haul immense loads such as coal, ores, grains, and etc. over long distances without breaking bulk, often struggling against heavy grades, presented pe peculiar difficulties. The 8, 10, or 12 ton wagon common to the British railways became absolutely useless because therewith, owing to the immense volume of traffic to be handled, the lines would have to become choked throughout the 24 hours with unwieldy long trains. So the Santa Fe railroads, amongst others, had figures before them that saw the United States railroads handling 1,500,000,000 tons of goods, which is about one-sixth more than that moved on the combined railroads of the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and Russia all combined in the same period. And thus, under the circumstances, the futility of the small wagon may be appreciated, but there was another factor which influenced the situation very vitally. With the small wagon, the proportion of live or paying tonnage in a train is small in comparison with the dead or non-paying train tonnage. All the while, more train miles have to be run in order to cope with the transportation of a certain volume of traffic. The point was to reduce both the number of train miles and the proportion of the dead load. And the only way to do that was to introduce larger vehicles or cars. Accordingly, there came the 30-ton wagon which enabled the train to be shortened very appreciably. Once the development of these new rail cars started, it went ahead rapidly. The vehicles were increased in capacity until today there are cars on the American and Canadian lines capable of carrying 75 tons. This means that when 5,000 tons of coal or grain or what have you have to be moved a matter of 10 or 1,500 miles, a single American train of 40 vehicles will handle what would require 300 British 10-ton trucks. The operating expenses thus are decreased as well as the train miles, while the income per train is increased. However, these larger rail cars precipitated another problem. The hauling power of a locomotive became overtaxed, so that it was necessary to utilize two engines to a train, while for the negotiation of long steep banks to the mountains, additional power had to be taken on to push and haul the load over the hump, or else the train had to be divided and run in sections over the obstacle. 
As such, the locomotive engineers were urged to evolve larger, more powerful engines to dispense with the double-heading in division of trains. And this was a problem that wasn't very easy to solve owing to the designer being cramped by the comparative narrowness of the standard gauge. Design engineers increased the length and diameter of their boilers until they were unable to go another inch in either direction, and even then they encountered harassing difficulties in connection with the firebox and the complete combustion of their fuel. Additional driving wheels were introduced to secure the maximum adhesion and tractive effort, and remarkable ingenuity was displayed in order to secure efficient steaming qualities. And it was conceded generally that the 10 driving wheel locomotive represented the limitations of design with a rigid wheelbase. While engineers were racking their brains as to how to obtain greater power, there appeared an invitation which changed completely the whole problem of locomotive design. And this was the articulated locomotive, as evolved by Anatole Mallet of Paris. It appeared an appearance on the French railways created the sensation. American engineers realizing the advantages and the fact that therewith it was possible to attain that increased power which was demanded so urgently and therefore local, uh, railroads such as the Santa Fe embraced the idea forthwith. And thus we have the idea and concept of the double decapod Santa Fe 3000 series. So these huge 3000 series locomotive had a maximum drawbar pull of 111,600 pounds as discussed earlier and in an experimental run to ascertain its hauling capacity one of its class drew a train of 100 loaded freight cars representing the live weight of 4,341 tons from Emporia to Argentine which was a distance of 111 and a half miles where the maximum grade is 21 feet per mile and they did this in 6 hours and 20 minutes. The 3000s also hauled a load of 1,911 tons at a speed of 12 miles per hour over a grade rising 79.2 feet per mile. And that was done at a speed of 10 miles per hour. The engine developed some 3000 horsepower. The 3000 lo uh, series locomotives were utilized for the most part in territory served by the Ashes in Topeka and Santa Fe Railroad, where the ruling grade is 90 feet per mile. The train loads upon this division averaging 1,900 tons in a speed range between 12 and 15 miles per hour. Other locomotives of this class are reserved for pusher service to assist the regular trains over Cahoon Mountain in California where the grade runs as high as 180 feet per mile. These Santa Fe giants aroused worldwide interest during that time period. All of this sounds like a pioneer and locomotive type of technology, right? No, not so fast. Basically, the locomotive uh, class were under-designed and were failures from the start. Having not enough boiler and firebox that could not make steam fast enough to feed their mass from cylinders, thus holding their operating speed to less than 10 miles an hour on average. And ironically, this problem plagued the Erie Triplex project as well, which was going on in a similar time period. And also, these double decapod 3000 series were very high in maintenance issues and combine that with their lack of speed and their ability to steam at high rates, the 3000s were converted to back to simple 2102 types, which became the 3010 class between 1915 and 1918. And if you'll remember, these uh, 21010 2 locomotives were kitbashed from 2102s to begin with. And unfortunately, from that point on, the Santa Fe ceased to experiment with Malay designs and it did not purchase any articulated equipment until World War II. And with that, the following specifications apply to the Santa Fe Railroad's Class 3000 2 10 10 2 double decapods. The overall length of the locomotive was 122 feet. The locomotive weight was 616,000 pounds. The tendered weight was 266,400 pounds for a total weight of 882,400 pounds. The boiler pressure was 225 psi. The cylinders were four, com four compound uh, low pressure front and uh, high pressure rear. The high pressure cylinders were 28 by 32 inches and the low pressure cylinders were 38 by 32 inches. The main driver diameter was 57 inches and the build date was, was between 1911 and 1912 which was 10 units and they were converted back to 2102s in 1915 to 1918. 
And as mentioned previously, the tractive effort was 111,600 pounds. All of the 210 2 conversions were withdrawn from service between 1945 and 1953, and all of them were scrapped between 1947 and 1943. None were preserved. And with that, I'll wrap up the video. If you enjoyed the content today, please hit the like button. And also, if you've not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as both the like and subscribe features help the channel grow immensely. And don't forget about the super thanks uh, button on the taskbar if you want to help to contribute to the channel's efforts. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you don't want to do it that way, you can visit our print shop at nickelplate.limited on Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.